So now, let's all agree. Do not worry about the wicked. Do not apply those who do wrong. Weakness and trust in the Wait in life to free and Trust the Lord and do what is good. Make your mouth with the mind of your feet and knees. Make your mouth with your And he will give you what you are desired. Commit your faith in God. Trust in me that you will have. Make your heart clear and fly to the integrity of your life. Be quiet and warm. Away patiently. Not worried about men who make their fortunes. About men who need to bring the Lord to the Lord. Without anger, leave her as a sign. Do not worry. Not do what evil can come of her. We can believe it.
keep our priority straight so that we can be able to do the mission and the things that we can just do. Otherwise, we lose the Lord forgive us for our sins and so we can give us a portion of your Holy Spirit to the next seven day. That's what we ask in Jesus' name. Okay, good morning. Okay, um, who here has grandparents living in another country? Okay, so they're not here? Okay. Back in their country, uh, do, does your, do they have like a farm back there? What do you know about the place where your grandparents live? I don't know. Oh, you don't know, okay. <laughs> have you who, who raised our hand a while ago? Do you have your country in the other in another country? Okay. Do you do you have any idea of the place where you live? Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Is it like a farm? Or okay, because the the, the two kids in my story actually they have grandparents. They stay here in the United States, but their grandparents is back in another country. It's called Philippines. And these two kids, their name is Jack. The older one is Jack, and the younger one is Jenny. And then the summer came and they're so excited because they're gonna have a vacation back in their grandmother's place in the Philippines. And they really can't wait to go there. And when the day came that they were already going to be there, they were saying, okay, once we go to grandma's house, you know what we're going to do? We're going to be helping grandma do some household chores. Do you want to be helping your grandma? Do you want? You do, like? Right? Okay, so they were excited and they were finally there. And their grandmother has a very, very big farm. And the farm has some cows, some hens, some ducks. And so Jack and Jenny, they were so happy to go to their grandmother's farm. And so what they would do every morning, they would walk and they would watch all the animals that the grandmother has. One day, Jack and Jenny was walking and Jack was bringing something with him, which was a sling. Do you know what's a sling? Okay, he has a sling. And one day they were walking, and then looking upon the animals, they saw three ducks. And they were walking like this. The ducks, quack, 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 quack. The ducks said, and so Jack said, oh, those ducks are very beautiful. But you know what he did? He got one piece of stone and put it in his sling. And he did it like this. Oh, the stone hit the butt of the duck. And the duck didn't want it. The duck just said, quack, 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 jump. He just said like that. Okay, Jack said, I'm going to get one more piece. And he took one more and he put it in the sling. And this time he tried it a little bit harder. Oh, it hit the duck, but again, it's in the butt part of the duck. And the duck just said, quack, 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 quack. The duck just said. And this time, Jack is a little bit impatient. He said, okay, this duck is really making me upset. He got another stone and put it in his leg. And then this time, he really concentrated and he did. <laughs> oh, this time. Someone hit the dog's head and like Thank you. 
But Jenna said, okay, that seems fine with me. On one condition, you have to be my slave. <laughs> Jack said, okay, 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 I'll be your slave. No matter what you say, I'm going to follow you. Okay, 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 help me, let's bury the dog. And they dig the soil and they bury the dog. Oh, that evening, Jack, he was so scared. He felt a little bit guilty. But you know, in grandmother's house, they have responsibilities. Jack has to do the dishes, and Jenny has to wipe the table. But that evening, something strange happened. Grandmother was watching. Before Jack was going to do the dishes, Jenny just did like this. Oh, quit, Jack. Oh, yeah, here's, here's the cloth. You can wipe the table for me. And Jack said, oh, I thought it's your responsibility to do this. Why are you asking me? And Jenny said, remember the dogs. The <laughs> dogs? She said, okay, I'm going to wipe the table for you. So why wipe the table? Okay. And then the next day, oh, Jenny was feeling like a princess. Jenny said, okay, great Jack. You do this one for me, and you carry this for me. But Jack cannot complain. He just have to obey everything that the sister says. And so the whole day, Jack was totally like a slave to her sister. At the end of the day, he is so tired because Jenny had him running around, do everything that she wants him to do. And then the evening came, and again, this time, it's Jenny's turn to wash the dishes, and Jack's supposed to wipe the table. And then that night, do you know what happened? Can you guess what happened? Jenny came to do the dishes. Yes. And Jenny did so. Yes, but the thing.
or how bad had of what we done is. We pray, Father in heaven, that you please help us learn lessons from our dear Bible study church and help us to learn more about you, you more and more. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 We can have a little bit for our praise one today, um, we will be focusing on family and um, the community. So let us first turn our hymns to hymn number 655. Happy birthday.
We just need to look a certain way or play a certain part, maintain a certain work ethic, or keep a certain mindset. But we know that it's not the case, Lord. Please keep this reminder and this truth at the forefront of our minds and our hearts. Father, there are other things in today's day and age that happen beyond our understanding. When these things happen, Lord, please help us remember that there aren't always explanations or reasons, and that isn't always our place to seek them. It is instead our place and our duty to have faith in you always, that there is a reason for, for why these happen, and that they are part of your will for us. Help us remember that you are love and cling to that fact, and practice love when we do not understand or comprehend. Father, today we pray for our families, and we ask that you be with us, with those of our families who are ailing, who don't feel like themselves today, who are um, who are not with us today for whatever reason. We ask that you be with our family members who are far away from us, who are in a different state for whatever reason, or maybe in a different country. And we know that you are the vine that keeps us all close and together. And we ask that you take care of them. We pray for our family members, Lord, who are right here in this very same room with us, who may have some secret burdens in their hearts or some sadness or loneliness or pain. We ask, Lord, that you be with them and that you help heal whatever they're going through. But also, Lord, that you still instill in us understanding to reach out to our brothers and sisters and our family members here in our, in our church family that are hurting as well, that we can also be a comfort to one another. Lord, in the coming week, I ask that you um, continue to be with us, that you continue to bless us the way you have blessed us in the previous week. We ask that you be with us during the sermon and the remainder of our worship today. That the lessons we learn, Lord, find a permanent, deep place in our hearts. And that the lessons we take away from our worship today are carried with us throughout the rest of our lives, shining like a beacon through our hearts to other people that they may see you within us. All these things are we ask for the forgiveness of our sins. In our name we pray. Amen. Amen. challenging, maybe even impossible situations. He remind, and the devil is always trying to say, you're going to fail. This is it. God is punishing you because you're a bad person. But Jesus says, uh-uh, that's not the truth. Listen to me. I am the voice of truth. This situation I'm putting you in is for my glory. And I'm going to show the world, and especially show you, that I am the one in control. As long as we listen and always believe. Oh, what I would do to have the kind of faith it takes to climb out of this boat I'm in and on to the crashing waves to step out of my comfort zone and to the realm of the unknown where Jesus is and he's holding out his hand but the waves are calling out my name and they laugh at me Reminding me of all the times I tried before and failed. The waves that keep on telling me time and time again, girl, you'll never win. You'll never win.
for a giant with just a sling and a stone surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors shaking in their armor wishing they'd have had the strength to stand and that giant
parents who are handsome and beautiful. <laughs> Don't you think so? Yeah, because if I will come out to this world, I am handsome. And I'm beautiful if I'm a girl, right? But then I was not given the choice. And probably I would select someone who is tall, dark, and handsome. But then I'm sure. <laughs> and not only that, if I'm given the chance to choose my father and mother, I would choose one who has the brain, who is intelligent. Because for sure, the offspring would be one and tell me. But then I wasn't given the, the choice. And the second one that probably you will disagree with, you will disagree with me, is to choose the time for you to die. Only God knows when you are going to die. There was a man who was desperate in his life and he said he has lots of, of debts and he said in order for my debt to be the rest I'm going to commit suicide. And so one day he drove his car he went up to a certain place going up and he marked the place where he's going to commit suicide and coming down. Instead of coming that way, he's gone into the precipice. But then, you know what? He did not die. <laughs> And mind you, this man was given the privilege of hearing some uh, news from a literature evangelist. And this man became a literature evangelist. And he made so many converts because of his experience. He changed his life. Because God has given him a second chance to live. And he made use of that time. So you see, you cannot choose the time that you would want to die. Probably you drink poison, but if God doesn't allow you to die, you will not die. <laughs> there was a man, and the little this hospital one time, who is rich, and he drinks so much. He said he told me that he drinks a uh, uh, sleeping tablet. So many of them, but then a friend of him happened to visit him and knocked at the door and nobody answered and he went to the room and he found him and brought him to the, to the hospital and he survived. <laughs> See, if God doesn't want you to die, he will not die. But it's not, that's not the, the thing that we're going to study today the three things that we're going to study is life three most important decisions this is actually a message for the youth but not only for the youth this is a message for all of us and even to me this is a message for me first their decision for an against God for or against God the second, the life companion. And the third, the life work. These are the three greatest uh, decisions that a person could have. First, in Romans 6, 16, if you have your Bible with you, you can open it with me in Romans.
Do you know? Do you not know? That the home you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin or death or of obedience to righteousness. You can be, you can choose whether to be God or to, to, to save the world or to serve God. There's no neutral ground here. Whether you like it or not, you have to choose whether you serve God or you serve the world or to serve, serve Sinai. When the Israelites coming from bandage to the promised land, God instructed Moses. It is in record, recorded in Numbers 33, 50 to 52. Moses was given an instruction to destroy all the, the high places. When we enter, when they enter Canaan, they want them to remove all the high places, all the gods. They will only know whether they obey God if they follow His instruction. Moses was told to tell all the Israelites that when they enter the, the land that he has promised to them, they should drive all the inhabitants there and all their gods in high places will be uh, thrown down and they will only know whether they obey God if they follow the instruction. And so, they, we, we will only know whether we will be God if we follow His instruction. Surely He did. But there are gods also within us. That before entering into the heavenly Canaan, we need to destroy. Because this will affect us if we will not really destroy. Just like the Israelites, they were bidden to destroy all the gods of the Amorites, of the Hittites, of all those Philistines that were there. But the same thing with us, brethren, that before we can enter the heavenly Canaan, we need to destroy all the gas that we have in our lives. What are these gods? Oh, there are lots. We're told that anything that we love more than we love God, it becomes our God. There are lots of instances that sometimes when we were in the Philippines, they, not all of us can go to church because they are worried of the house who will be left behind in order to take care of the house or to take care of the animals that they become so important that rather than going to church they become gods because we love them more than we love God sometimes we cannot go to church with a, without a new, new sh uh, dress, new suit they become our gods so anything that we love more than we love God 
they became our God. Now the second one is the life companion we select. The friends. I like the story of friendship of David and Jonathan. That is a wonderful friendship that I ever read in the Bible. Imagine the son of a king. He opted not to be envious when God said that David would be the next king. I don't know if you are in his place. If you are in Jonathan's place, probably, I don't know, but I see how Jonathan, the friendship of Jonathan and David, narrated in the Bible. That his the friendship was so close that he even protected his friend, David, not to be killed by his father. Probably, I don't know if it is in my case, probably I will help my father in order to, to kill David. I don't know. But then the story tells us that their friendship was so close. And because of that closeness, when David became the king, when, when Saul and Jonathan died in battle, he inquired from his servant, is there anybody here who knew the descendant of Jonathan? And the servant said, oh, I know one. He said, who is he? Oh, it's me full of death. A lame, mind you, he was a lame man. But then, David said, you bring him here. And you know what David did? Oh, we know the story. He explained to David, I told you to me, focused Probably he explained how he, their, their, the friendship of his father with him was so close that he wants to repay his father. That's why he called him. And what did he do? He asked him to stay there, to eat what he ate, and sustain him. Oh, that friendship is super. Yes, the friend that we choose sometimes bring us away from God. I was a youth once upon a time. And you know, the force of peace is so strong rather than the influence of the family of the parents of the home. I hear my mother tells me and enters my right ear and then goes out here. But the friend, oh my, they will say, we will go there. Oh, come on, let's go. You kill your dad and we will kill it and we will have it as pollutant. And we did it. They will be dancing tonight. You better get your clothes ahead of time. I was in the gospel with my sister. I had told you already that there was a chase with luck in it. But then my sister doesn't know that before Beforehand, I get my dress and put it to my, give it to my friend so that she will know that I'll be going and dance because the, 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 the good thing in dancing is that when you, oh, I love it. <laughs> and they said, 
I remember they said that uh, dancing is a sin, but it was legalized by the music. Because if you embrace somebody in the Philippines without permission, you will be in trouble. But then when there is music, uh, it's it's quite a long uh, period of time that you are holding the lady and then you dance. And then I love it. So, friends sometimes will bring you to something that will, will be come very far from God. Yes, there's a saying that there's a friend that stick it closer than a brother. And there's a saying that show me your friend and I will tell you who you are. Because of the influence. If you go with drunkards, you will become a drunkard. If you go with uh, thief, you will absolutely you will become a thief. But if you go with friends who fear God, then you will be influenced influence to be a God-fearing and so loving Christian. Yes, we need to choose friends who fear God. Say that is better half. Your wife, your spouse. They said, somebody said that bitter half. Why is it bitter? It's not better half, but it's bitter half. Yes. I remember Mrs. White telling us that when you choose a life partner, to choose someone who is God fearing and truth loving. Because a God fearing and truth loving woman will remain faithful and he will, she will stand by your side through faith in him. Especially if he is not materialistic. But those people who are materialistic, ah, afterwards, you cannot give. You cannot give what they want. They oh, oh, I. They look for somebody in order to sustain them with their material needs. But if you choose someone who really fear God, oh my! I said, I'm happy that with my dear friends. Before. <laughs> I go back to whom I knew that she will stick to me to keep in me. That's why Brother Joe were now 41 years in marriage too. And we still walk together. Why? Because I choose the right woman. For me. One who feel God. Who you love you too. So young people, remember that. When you choose a life partner, you choose a woman who feel God. Beauty? Oh! Beauty! Pretty soon will have a wrinkle in her face. Face! And probably you it will gone. Beauty fades, but the character remains. You look not only the outside of outside appearance of a woman or a man, but when someone was asked by the Lord to look for a king, someone was too excited when he saw the firstborn of Jesus. Oh yeah, this is now the king. Oh, he's done. 
God said to Samuel, look not the outside appearance of a new you. you look at the heart. So the most important is the heart. She may not be beautiful, she may not be handsome, but then the heart is very important. There are lots of couples in the Bible that gives us an idea of a good, a good wife. And uh, the experience of David with Nabal. Remember, remember the story of Nabal, huh? He's a rich man. And he has a wife, a beautiful, beautiful wife by the name of Abigail. Remember Abigail. And Abigail was beautiful. But Nabal is, is evil, shall we say. You remember when David asked his servants or some of his soldiers to go and talk to Nabal? And Nabal said, who is the David? I do not do him. He is the son of Jesus. I, 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 I don't mind. But you know, David at the time, was really would like to to go back and uh, kill Nabal. But you know what happened? Because the soldiers of David, they got 600 of them. And then 10 of them was asked to go to Nabal and asked for something. Because he actually protected Nabal's uh, herds, their goat, uh, their, their, their sheep, their camels, and all their property was protected. Nothing uh, was taken of uh, uh, steel. Nothing, nobody steal because of their protection. And so one day they said, why don't you go to Nabal? Because this time is time for sharing. And they, they would like to ask something. But then Nabal was so rude that he didn't even recognize David. And so when the ten men came back to David and he said what he told them, David was so angry. He got his 400 men ready. Took their uh, their their there's uh, swords and ready to, to annihilate uh, Nabal. But then one of the servants of Nabal told Abigail. He said, the man of David came and asked for something. But then Nabal was so rude. And Abigail. We're told that Abigail is a woman he is kind, loving, and understanding the woman. So what he did? He asked the servant to prepare something in order to be brought to David. You know that there's something wrong that will happen. And so he hasn't anticipated that. What are the things that they prepared? They prepared 200 loaves of bread, two pints of, uh, of wine, five sheep, uh, already dressed, five sheets of roasted green, hundred clusters of grapes and, and raisin, of raisins, two hundred cakes of figs, and loaded it to the dam. To make the long story short, he knew that David was coming. And so Abigail ran before David mounted from his donkey and then kneeled before him. And he asked for forgiveness for what his husband did. And he made uh, so many uh, pleadings with David. 
And because of that, David was fast. Instead of going to kill Nabal, his heart was softened because of what Abigail did. And you know what happened? After 10 days, according to, to the record, God really avenged for David and Nabal. He died. A good woman. A kind, loving, and understanding woman. You know what kind is? is? There's a writer who said that kindness is a language that a thief can hear. And the dumb understand. Kindness! Even animals could understand whether you are kind or not. Yes, kindness is very it's a trait that we all of us should have. That we should be kind, loving, and understanding. Like Abigail who is kind, loving, and understanding. Had it not been for Abigail, neighbor would have been dead. How about Ahab and Jezebel. What is the the uh, difference between Ahab and Jezebel? You know, God uh, many said that God sometimes they, they, they choose someone to be the pacifier and the one that is aggressive, so that there's somebody that would control. We know that. Uh, Ahab is a weak king. But Jezebel was so aggressive. And you know the story one time when neighbor I mean, when when Ahab visit the nearby property of Nebo and he likes it and he wants to buy it. But Nebo doesn't want to sell it to him. And he was so happy. You know, sometimes if it is very important in our lives, especially if it is uh, what we call a souvenir or something that we treasure, no matter what they say, they want to buy it, we won't, we won't sell it. And Nebo probably has a, uh, what do we call that one? The, There is a sentimental value. <laughs> there is a sentimental value to him, that land, that he doesn't want to sell it. The garden near to, 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 to Ahab. And so Ahab went home, he not eat, he not sleep. And the, and the wife noticed, this noticed him. What's wrong with you? What happened? You know, sometimes, husband and wife, sometimes, when there is something wrong, they cannot sleep, they cannot eat. You will notice that to your husband or wife. And Jesus will notice it. And says, what's wrong? Always he tells the story. story and then, Don't worry. Tomorrow, you will have it. He's trying to scheme something that so that the neighbor will die. What happened? Surely. You have the property. But then the prophet said, Oh, what you have done, God will have done. And you will die. By what? Your blood will be leaked by what? By the dogs. And even Jesus. And it happened. Yes, in choosing a life partner, sometimes it's difficult. You know, remember Job? He knows that he is faithful to God, but the time came when 
when something happened to him and the wife said, Oh, Joe, you still remain faithful to your God. Why don't you trust your God in that? Oh yeah, there are some, some husband, some, some wife who like the wife of uh, uh, Joe. But let's pray that somehow we may be a good spouse. The question is, can we really choose? Still choose our spouse today. If you ask me, I will never exchange my wife. For 41 years, we were together. And one time happened when coming from 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 uh, California, going to Texas. We were stopped in El Paso, and when I asked her, where is your, your green card? Oh, I put it inside my, the, the, the cabinet right there in the, in the trailer. I said, probably for 14 years that we were together, you will be lived here in, in, in El Paso. I was just joking. <laughs> But then God here in, 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 in America, because they can look at it in the, in the, in the computer, because I, I give my, my, my green card, and then, lo and behold, we were, we were said, you know, had it been for that computer, probably my wife would be left behind. But then I'm happy, because she was with me. The third one, the life work we choose. Sometimes, when I was young, I would like to be a soldier. In fact, when I was in high school, I became a core commander of the PMT, Philippine Military Academy. But that plan, because my wife, my my mom, my mother was so uh, afraid for me to to be a soldier because my dad was a soldier before, and he said it's not good for you to be a soldier. So I wasn't able to go to PMA because I really want to go to PMA instead. But then later on, I found myself when I heard sermons. And when I studied in our academy, in Nagaview Academy, I said, I would like to be a minister. And it did happen. And I'm happy. If I were to choose a profession once again, I still choose to be a minister. Amen. The only problem here is that I cannot express myself very well, but it's in Tagalog. <laughs> but in English, I have a deficiency of sometimes you have to. But then, for 32 years, and I saw this, uh, this is a pena, this is my kumare, the, the wife of Pastor Mangilima. We, we worked together in, in the Central Eastern Conference for quite a long time. Yes, choosing a profession needs the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes choosing a profession might lead you to go away from God. So, we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You know the experience of Pilate? During the trials of Jesus, he was brought 
to the governor. He was the governor at the time. And what happened? They know that Jesus has no fault, but he said to wash his hands because if he is going to release Jesus, he will not be a friend to the people and he will lose his job. But he chose to remain the governor. That's why he washed his hands and said, It's up to you. But as for me, I didn't find him for Yes, today, Mrs. White tells us in the messages to young people that the greatest one of the world today is the one of men. It's the one of men and women. Men who cannot be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost soul are true and honest. Men who do not fear to cause him to face right. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the bone. Men and women who will stand for the right to the heavens. That's the kind of men and women that we need to know. And choosing our life vocation, our life partner, and choosing a right decision. There are three things that influence us. First, what we read, it influences us. It influences our decision. How often we read the Bible? But we were ordained into the ministry to our admonish that before when you are a student, you keep on reading the Bible, the more when you become a minister, to keep reading your Bible. Not only that, I would say also that all the members, in order for us to be able to be strong in the faith, is really to read the Word of God. Because the first time you read the Bible, Sometimes it does not have any effect in you. But you read it again, oh, you will see something different. So from day to day, every time you read the Bible, you ask the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and minds. So the Bible is one of the things that we need. And the friends we may influence us by what we see and what we hear. I don't know if you will believe in me, but a mother lost his three sons. I never thought that, no, I mean that the, the mother lost his wife and he got three sons. He lost his husband on the sea. And he never saw him. And so this mother was so desperate and said, I don't want my sons to become a zero. So he tried his best to protect his son not to become a zero. But one day, when the, the first one became ready to work, oh, he left. And he became a sailor. And the mother was so, so desperate. He said, what, what, what have I lacked? I, I try my son not to become a sailor, but later on he became. And the second one, the same thing happened. And the third one. And he said, what's wrong, Lord? What happened? <laughs> and he entered his room, their room. And what, you know, what, 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 what he saw? What he saw? <coughs> he saw on the wall the beautiful picture of her husband. Who sing in the ship. Day and night going to sleep and getting up, the children saw the people. And that 
be to influence their children, their, their children, to follow the footsteps of the father because of that picture that he saw every now and then right in the wall. Yes. It influenced our decision by what we see and by what we hear. My daughter decided to become a doctor. When he saw in the hospital what was going on, she said, I want to be like that. And so we, even though we didn't have enough money, but then we, the parents struggled in order for, for her to go to school and bring her to the city king because that influenced her on her decision. Probably your mothers have a beautiful cup and a picture right in your wall. And your children saw that. And probably they will decide that someday she will be captain and ask Wait a moment. But then we see that it influences our decision. Yes. What we hear, what we see, what we read, influence our decision. The appeal and this just young people, page 88 says, choose poverty, reproach, separation from friends, rather than to define the soul. And our memory verse it says, Choose you this day on your child. But Jesus was saying, But as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. May the Lord help us that no matter what happened, first we should choose to say fine. And remain faithful to our spouses that we choose. And to those who are uh, contemplating to me, to settle down, choose someone who is God fearing and true loving spouse. Amen. And the end. Help us to choose a right vocation that will help us to remain faithful.